Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Kristen and I would like to show you my fountain pen collection. First, I wanna start with the fountain pens that I know I won't be keeping for very long. This is the Moon Man One Kai Mini. It's a nice fountain pen. I actually have another one in a different colorway that I will be keeping in my collection. I'm gonna pass this one along because this is not what I expected to receive when I purchased it from amazon.com. I was expecting a different colorway. It looks really nice. I actually like the chatoyants in here, but it's not what I wanted. It's not what I was hoping for, not what I was looking for. So I'm gonna just pass this one along. The next one is this Estabrook. I think it's an LJ fountain pen. I don't know if this is a 9668 or 8996. It's a pretty stiff nib. It is one of those lever fills. So it has like a little bladder on the inside. And I realized that that this type of filling mechanism, I just do not like fountain pens with this type of filling mechanism. I prefer basically anything over this option. I also don't like the feel of the nib. So this one is not gonna be staying in my collection for very long. I'm probably just gonna give it away. This is the Jinhao Centennial or Jinhao 100. It's actually really lovely pink color. It's got a really nice extra fine nib. It feels really good in my hands. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this pen but it is not one of my favorites. I feel like I would probably appreciate this pen much more if it wasn't like the, the very square, very rectangular boxy centennial shape, but if it had like the rounded finials, it looks great and it performs wonderfully well. I really enjoyed using this nib, but it's just, I'm not really in love with the shape of the pen. And lastly is the, I believe it's a legitimate, Lamy. I think it's a Lamy All-Star. It feels cool to the touch. So, so I received this as a gift from a family member. And so it's really nice, but I've never reached for this fountain pen. It's got a fine nib. I already have a Lamy Safari that I would prefer to use over this one. So instead of just keeping this one in my collection over guilt and not even using it, I want to pass it along to someone who would actually appreciate this pen. All right. So this is the first display case. I have three display cases of fountain pens to get through, and this is the first one, the top layer. These are most of my Italian fountain pens. These are the ones that would fit on the top row. First up is my Omas Ogiva in saft green. Very beautiful fountain pen. I love that sometimes it looks black and other times it's got this little flash of green in here. I purchased this one at the San Francisco Pen Show. It's got a medium nib and it is gorgeous. I love this thing. It writes so nicely. And this one is my Omas AM87 in the brown briarwood model. It's got a fine nib and it writes beautifully as well. I purchased this one very recently, I believe late last year. And this third one is an Omas AM87 as well. And this is the green briarwood model. I love how some of these areas, some of the areas on this pen are actually a little bit worn. So you can see the brown wood peeping through the green. I love that. And this has a medium nib and it is so juicy. This is another fountain pen that I purchased at the San Francisco Pen Show last year. This is the Scribo Feel in the Granilia finish. This is a fine flex nib. Very wet writer. Nice and responsive nib. This is my Aurora 88. The Birth of Turin. I believe this is a Chatterley Luxuries exclusive fountain pen. And I bought this one secondhand. This has a medium nib. I still have yet to use it, but it looks gorgeous. 
This is my Aurora 88 or Aurora Madera. It has a fine nib. Lovely feedback on this thing. This is my Visconti Mirage Mythos. It has a fine Schmidt nib. Super juicy writer. I love how this thing feels when I write with it and I love the, the snap of the magnetic cap. This is my Visconti Kaleido in Unicorn Galaxy. This is a resin by Jonathan Brooks. It is a fine nib that was ground down to a cursive italic by Dan Smith, the nibsmith.com. This is my fountain pen day purchase. I purchased this Visconti Homo Sapiens Dark Age from Atlas Stationers at a really nice price. It has a medium nib. And yes, I am an Atlas affiliate now. Yay. <laughs> so if you'd like to make any purchases through Atlas Stationers, you can use my code Kristen at checkout. This is my Leonardo Momento Zero Grande and the Mother of Pearl finish. This is also a Jonathan Brooks resin. This has a medium architect nib. This was also ground by Dan Smith of the nibsmith.com. Both of these are Jonathan Brooks materials and both have been ground by Dan Smith. This is my Leonardo Momento Zero Grande 2.0 and the Primary Manipulation 1 matte finish. Yeah, I think this has a fine steel nib. It rides really nicely. Oh, it feels so nice. And this is my sentimental Leonardo Momento Zero and the Nuvola finish. It means cloud in Italian. My Leonardos tend to have ink at the very tip, the very edge of the section, but um, it actually cleans off pretty nicely. And this has a medium 14 karat gold nib. And I believe Leonardo makes their gold nibs in house now. So this is a Leonardo 14 karat gold nib. Oh, this pen is so lovely. All right, so that's the top row. Let's go down to the next row. Here I have a few more of my Italian pens, plus a few pens from other countries and other time periods. So this is my Monte Grappa Elmo in the marshmallow finish. This was a Goulet exclusive with this gold trim and it has an extra fine steel nib. This thing is so stiff, but it is so lovely to write with. And I love how, I love the weight of it and how it just presses right there in my hands. It feels so good. This is my Leonardo Momento Zero Grande in the Pura model. The gray anthracite is the color. It has a medium 14 karat gold nib. And this gold nib was actually a Yovo gold nib. So it has a good deal of bounce on it. I need to ink this one up again and enjoy it. This is my Leonardo Momento Magico in the Milifiori finish. It has an extra fine Yovo steel nib. Yo. So yeah, it looks really dark and moody sometimes, but if you get some light shining on it at just the right angle, you see all of those beautiful colors. And this is my newest Bennu fountain pen. This is the Bennu Euphoria in Earl Grey, and it has a fine nib. I'm so excited to use this one. Oh, these are little, look at the little blue flecks in here. Oh, I love the blue in here. I wasn't expecting to enjoy the blue, but it's just, it's so vibrant and it pops out so nicely. And here is my Bennu Talisman in the Venus hair model. It has a medium nib. It is super juicy, super reliable. I love using this thing. This is my Drevnam Pisana Orion fountain pen in the wind model. It's a combination of resin in the section and barrel and a little bit of the cap as well. And then maple for most of the cap and in the bottom of the barrel as well. It's a Bach nib. I can't remember if it's a fine or medium. I'll let you know. Let's look at that beautiful two-tone Bach nib. I love the color scheme in this fountain pen. This is my Eversharp Skyline fountain pen. Oh, this thing is so gorgeous. It's so beautiful. I love the shape of this thing where it's got the rounded finial on the cap, but then it comes down to a point at the end of the barrel. Now this one is also one of those lever feel with the bladder fountain pens. And for that reason, I don't use it as much as I would like. It's still such a really nice fountain pen. It writes very well. Now this is my lovely Schaefer Balance Admiral. I purchased this one at the 2022 San Francisco Pen Show from Paper Wants a Pen. This was my first ever vintage fountain pen. And so I had such a beautiful, wonderful experience with this pen that I really wanted to branch out and buy additional vintage fountain pens. So this one writes really well. And I'm so glad that this, that this one does not use a lever fill or any sort of bladder as a filling mechanism. This is actually a vacuum filled fountain pen and it just, and it writes so well. This is a Feather Touch 5 nib. There has been some wear and tear on 
the barrel of the pen because of the many times that I have posted this to write with it, but I just cannot, I cannot write with this fountain pen comfortably without posting it. So that's just one of the things that I'm just going to have to get over because this is the only way that I can use this pen. And I, I would rather use it and have that little bit of character added to my fountain pen than to keep it pristine and never use it in my collection. This is a Stanford Pen Studio Jabulani fountain pen. And this is custom artwork by Hannah Farmer. This is lovely. It was named the Mermaiden fountain pen. And it has a fine nib with a Stanford Pen Studio stamp on there, their logo on here. I've had this ground down to an architect nib by Kirk Spear at the 2023 pen show. And it writes so very well. This is my Asveen V126. So it's a vacuum fill fountain pen and it has a medium nib and it writes so, so well. I like this, I really like this fountain pen. So it's a great, great pen. All right, so that's the second row. Here's the third row. So these are most of my German pens. I've still got Cavecos in another drawer, but this is the bulk of my German pens. This is my Pelican 140 a vintage fountain pen. It has a fine nib that kind of flexes to a broad, basically. So, oh, but it is so, so nice. I'm so happy that I purchased this one. It's got a, it's a piston fill fountain pen, just like my other Pelicans. And so I really love that about this one. So it's a really small, really compact, but it writes so, so well. This is my Pelican M205 in the Moonstone finish. It has a steel medium nib. It's a really nice pen. This is my Pelican M400 in the white tortoiseshell finish. This thing just looks so nice. It's so cute. It's so lovely. And it has a 14 karat gold extra fine nib. And this one was tuned and smoothed by Kirk Spear and it writes lovely. I think I'm going to have to have it adjusted again for a better writing angle. So it writes really nicely, really lovely at a higher angle, but I need it to be adjusted for writing at lower angles. So it'll be a bit more comfortable for me. That was something that I didn't catch when I was at the pen show last year and I want to get it updated this year. This is my Pelican M605 Stressman model and it has a fine nib. It's a really nice pen. I love how it feels in my hands. Yeah, it's got some bounce to it and I really like that. So it's a good size without being super heavy. And this one has got some weight to it. This is my Pelican M800 in the brown black finish. And it is so good. <laughs> this one has a broad cursive italic nib. This cursive italic was ground by Mr. Mike Masayama at the 2023 San Francisco Pin Show and it is one of my favorite fountain pens. This is my Lamy 2000 and it has an extra fine nib. I purchased it with a fine nib, but that fine nib just would not work for me. It was not the nib size that, that worked best for me. So I swapped out that fine nib for an extra fine nib. And you can find that, that nib swap video on my channel if you're curious about that. But right now with that extra fine nib, it is like the perfect Lamy 2000 for me. This is my Lamy Studio in matte black. It has a new nib on it. Just like the nib swap on here, I did a nib swap on my Lamy Studio. So it had a steel, I believe it had a steel fine nib, which was like super fine and super stiff, but I really wanted something that was a little more responsive to my writing. And oh, I like that. I like how it just pops on the back. So I swapped out the fine nib for this oblique medium nib, this gold oblique medium nib. And it is really nice. There's some character to this oblique medium nib that took me a little while to really, to better understand it, but I really enjoy that. This is my Lamy Studio in black. It has a replacement section because I just could not stand the, the slippery metal section. So I got one of those matte section replacements from Vanis Pins. And it's also got a replacement nib on here. So this is, I believe, a long knife or a long blade nib that I purchased from, I think I purchased it on AliExpress. It's like the, I guess it's a Naginata Togi style nib grind, where depending on your writing angle, it'll give you thicker or thinner lines. All three of these Lamy fountain pens have received new nibs. And guess what? I'm thinking about doing the same thing with my Lamy Safari in Mango. Currently, this one has a fine steel nib. 
and I would love to put another nib on this one as well. So I really do enjoy my Lamy fountain pens, but I think I'm just looking for a very specific writing experience with each one of these. So yeah, that one's probably going to get an upgrade as well. And you don't have to do that. You really don't have to, but I'm probably going to seek out a gold nib to put on this thing. This is my, I think online pens, campus fountain pen. I received this one in an ink fly box. This one has a medium nib and it writes so very well. It is very comfortable in my hands. It's got a very subtle, I guess, um, tripod type grip on here. So I don't know if you can tell. So there's like a little bit of a groove cut out right here and another one cut out right there. So it kind of gives you the suggestion to put your fingers right there. There's no cutout at the bottom, but if you, you know, if you want to grip it any kind of way, you could probably ignore that, but it just feels pretty comfortable. It posts well. It makes it a bit long, but the cap is actually, it adds a negligible amount of weight. So this is a very nice fountain pen. It's much better than I was expecting. Every time I consider giving it away or selling it or removing it from my collection, I just, I pick it up, I write with this pen again, and it's like, no, I want to keep it because it just feels so, so good. All attendees at the 2023 Pelican Hubs should have received a pen like this one. And I believe this is the Pelican P20 Twist. It does not have any markings on the nib other than the Pelican logo. So I'm not exactly sure if this is a fine or a medium. It's probably a German fine nib. I am keeping this one around because it, I like it. All right, so my next display case has got all my Twisbees. This is my Twisbee Eco in the white. This one has a medium nib. It originally had an extra fine nib, but I swapped it out for a medium nib for some ink, probably Diamond Celebration last year. So it still has that medium nib in here. This is my newest Twisby. It's the Creme Rose Gold, and it has a 1.1 stub nib. I can't wait to use this one. It's so lovely. And next is the Cerulean Blue Twisby Eco, which probably has that extra fine nib. Yep. This has the extra fine nib that was originally in my Twisby Eco, the white one. This is my Twisby Eco in the indigo and bronze finish. It has a fine nib on this one. This is my Twisby Eco in black with an extra fine nib. This one is permanently inked up with a permanent black ink, which is currently platinum carbon black. This is my Twisby Eco in smoke rose gold. It's got a medium nib. This is my Twisby Diamond 580, a clear model in a 1.1 stub. I got a Twisby Diamond 580 in the silver, I believe. So it was the Twisby Diamond 580 AL in the silver, but I no longer have the silver section for that one. So it's got that replacement nib unit on it. This one is my Twisby Diamond 580 in the nickel gray. It has a medium nib on this one. So this is the ALR model. All right, so those are all of my Twisby fountain pens. Let's go to the next row. This is one of the trays that holds my American-made fountain pens. This is the Estherbrook Model J in the antique rose finish. I really like this finish. I love the feel of this hammered metal band on, this, on the barrel of the pen. And it just feels so very good in my hands. I got this one in just broad, but it's a Techo nib that was ground by CY. Really, really nice pen. This is my Estherbrook SD Oversized in the Botanical Gardens finish with the gold trim. And it's got a journaler nib by Gina Salarino. I love the weight and the size of this pen. Um, I'm probably going to get an Estherbrook SC, the regular size at some point, but I'm really happy with this one. This is my Franklin Christoph Model 3 in the amber and, what is it? Amber and lemon yellow, the finial. And the section is probably the amber and this lemon yellow finish. I love how, how neon it looks. Oh, it's so cool. But this one has a medium sig nib on it. This is the Franklin Christoph Model 2. Well, it's a matte finish in Ice and Primary Manipulation 1. And I love how deeply this thing posts. It just looks and feels so cute in my hands. I can write without it being posted, but I really just like how it looks when I post the pen. It has a broad sig nib and it is so juicy and so nice with the right ink. Oh, I love that thing. This is my Franklin Christoph model P20 and it's the, oh my goodness. It's like pink, blue and white sparkle finish or something like that. So it's a number five nib ground down to an extra fine sig nib and it posts really nicely. It feels good in my hands. 
This is my Franklin Christoph Model 45 in lavender. It has a number five fine cursive italic nib. Franklin Christoph has some really excellent customer service. I recently broke the feed on this nib, but after sending emails back and forth, I was able to send it off, to send off this section to get everything repaired and restored. And now all is well. This is a beautiful fountain pen and it writes so very well. And I'm so very happy with the customer service at Franklin Christoph. This is the Franklin Christoph Model 3 fountain pen in the antique, what is it, antique glass finish. You can post it, but I don't really need to. Uh, it has a fine sig nib. It writes so very well. I love the feel of these fountain pens. Like whatever resin they are using to make these fountain pens, it's just, they are so nice. I love how they feel in my hands. This is my Kara's pen. It's a Vertex fountain pen with a black aluminum section and a titanium Bach nib. It's an extra fine titanium Bach nib. Look at how cool that nib looks. I like the logo that they have on this thing. It's so cool. This fountain pen actually has a replacement cap on it. This was the original cap, but there's a crack in the cap somewhere down here. I contacted Kara's Pen Company and they sent out a replacement cap so very quickly. I love how fiery this cap looks right here. I think it's so cool. Next is my Shown Design Pocket 6 Fountain Pen. This is the Monsters Ink Aluminum Finish. It's got a full size, a number six nib on this thing. And it was ground to a perspective by Gina Salarino. It feels so nice in my hands. I like the coolness of the aluminum material. It just feels so nice. And this is also a Shown Design Fountain Pen. This is the Peekaboo fountain pen, and it's got a Monarch nib that was ground to a perspective also by Gina Salarino. Oh, I love how this pen feels. I love how it writes. I can't wait to use it again. All right, so next we've got some additional fountain pens. We've got a combination of American made pens. We've got some German pens in here, and we've even got one from China. So Uli, I didn't even know that this is an American brand. I believe they're somewhere in Southern California. I think San Diego, maybe? Have I cleaned it out? I think I cleaned it out. Yeah, I cleaned it out. But it writes really nicely. I'll have to try this out again sometime this year. But it's a pretty fun, really red fountain pen. This was the first pen that I ever purchased on Instagram. And it has taught me to cool my jets when it comes to trying to buy something online. Just like the craze of trying to beat someone to the punch when you're buying a fountain pen because someone's like, hey, I got this nice pen for sale. And so it just looks and feels a little bit different in person than I expected. I believe this is a Bach steel nib. It's probably a medium, but I will let you know for sure on the screen. Okay, so this is River City Pen Company fountain pen in the twilight finish, I believe. And I was just so excited to see like green and brown in a fountain pen that I just, I clicked and I typed and I thought about it later. This pen has taught me to think a little bit longer before I pull the trigger on purchasing fountain pens. I think this just really needs a really good, this needs a good ink and it might even need a good grind on the nib as well because right now it's just, it's an underwhelming pen. So I'll give it another chance this year, try it out with some really nice inks and see how I feel about it. Now this one is the Brute Force Design Fountain Pen in Spalted Maple. I believe this also, yeah, this also has a box steel nib. This thing feels so good. It looks so good. I love writing with this thing. I just love looking at this pen. I love holding this pen, but oh, it just looks so good. It looks so good. I might need to uh, work with the nib a little bit more, but I am so very happy with this pen. I don't even care how crappy the nib might be <laughs> because it's just it's really good it's really good because I can always replace this nib if it just doesn't work out with me if it doesn't work out for me but this pen is something that will always remain in my collection because it's just oh it's so nice this next one is the fountain telling I believe this is a Charleston slim model in the three olive martini finish 
So this was a mix, a fountain pen done by Kristen Brooks. Oh, it's so special because Kristen made this pen and you know, I'm Kristen. So I didn't make this pen, but someone with the same name made this pen. And so that makes it special for me. Look at how beautiful it is. I love the greens and the browns on this thing. It's very lovely. This is my first, first and only Edison Pen Company fountain pen. This is the premier model in the Dragoness finish. It's got a Yovo medium nib, but it is so nice and juicy and bouncy. I learned around the time that I purchased this fountain pen that they finish their own nibs. And so it really shows, it really shines. These are my five Caveco sport fountain pens. So this is my iridescent pearl fountain pen and a fine nib. I've got the gray anthracite model. I thought it was a medium nib, but this thing actually has a fine nib on it, which is probably why I was having so much of an issue with the shimmer ink that I put in here late last year. So I want to give this one another shot with a wetter nib and absolutely no shimmer in that one. This is my white Caveco Sport with an extra fine nib. I like the crisp lines that I can make with that fountain pen. This was my first ever Caveco Skyline Sport fountain pen purchase. And this is in a macchiato finish. It's got a double broad nib on this thing. I wrote with this one. I used this one with a super dry writing fountain pen ink, Ferris wheel press, Earl Grey, because I just loved the combination of the color of that ink plus this pen, but it just did not work out for me. So I want to try maybe something else and see what I think about a double broad nib with like some juicy ink. This is my Caveco Classic. I think this is classic with the gold trim. It has a medium nib, so it's that sparkly gold finish. It was the, it's a cold pens exclusive fountain pen. This is my Moonman Wankai Mini and the, I think they call this a marble green finish. I actually, I really love this resin material on this thing and it writes really well. All right, so that's my second display case. Now let's move on to my third and final display case. This case has all of my Japanese fountain pens. Here is my Sailor 1911 Large in the Stormy Seas model. And it's got a 21 karat gold fine nib. I really like this fountain pen. Um, this will never leave my collection. This was the first pen that my husband ever purchased for me. I love the shimmer in this resin. Like it just looks so very nice. It's like the like car paint when you get really close to it and you can see like the sparkly shimmery bits in it. And this is my Sailor Pro Gear Slim Mini Magic of Alice Small World. It is so tiny, but the name is so, so long. I love the finial on this thing. Look at that. And it's got like a little key on the nib. It's so cute. And I love the metal section on this thing. It's not slippery at all, but it just kind of gently suggests, you know, gently nudges me towards the paper. Okay, and this is my Sailor Shikyori Minori fountain pen. And it's got a medium fine nib, a 14 karat gold medium fine nib. And I just love the colors on this thing. Not individually, but I really love them together. They just work so well together. This is my Sailor Pro Gear Slim in the Dragon Palace model. It has a medium fine nib on this one as well. I haven't used it yet because I actually just got this one for Christmas. Look at this beautiful color. I love this green. I love this green. Oh, it's so nice. This is my Sailor Pro Gear Slim. It's the Yoseka Home model with a champagne gold trim. And I've got this one with a medium nib. This is such a lovely, lovely pen. My Sailor Pro Gear Slim in the Nuts model has a medium nib. I love using brown inks in this one. It's just so nice. This is my Sailor Pro Gear in the Stellar Black Hole finish. It's got a medium 21 karat gold nib. And here we are with my Sailor 1911 large in this, I think it's a maroon red. And I have an extra fine 21 karat gold nib on this thing. I am so excited to try out this extra fine Japanese nib with the Sailor feedback. Ooh, I wanna know what it feels like. And this is my Sailor LaCool. I think it's Rose Quartz, but I don't have to check to verify, but it's got a medium fine nib. And I believe this might've been my first ever Sailor pen. It was a really positive experience. I really like this one. I actually like using permanent inks in this thing. Okay, so this is the last row of the last case of my fountain pens, my Pilot Pens plus Wancher. Let me go ahead and show you my Wancher Dream Pen. 
it is the I forget what it's called purple something purple swirl something it's an ebonite fountain pen it has a medium nib that was a bit underwhelming so I got Kirk Spear to grind this down to a cursive italic nib and I am looking forward to trying it out this is my platinum 3776 Chanonceau white with a soft fine nib this is a dry writing fountain pen that is really really particular about the inks that i use in here we'll see because there are some really super duper wet inks that i want to try this year and i'm very excited about putting them in this pen because i want to see how it works i want to see what they do with each other and this is my platinum 3776 century in the nagasawa silhouette look at that beautiful nib oh it's so cool so cool this is a medium nib and it feels really nice in my hands, but it's a bit too short. It's a little bit too short. It's like, I wanna write, I wanna write with this pen posted, but when I post the pen, it feels back weighted. And I don't understand why this one feels back weighted when this one doesn't feel back weighted. They are exactly the same weight. The caps are the same weight. Like if I measure the caps, if I measure the weight, of the caps they're exactly the same if i measure the weight of the bodies of these pins they're exactly the same but when i post this one it feels perfect when i post this one it feels back weighted so whatever is going on with the weight distribution of these pin caps i don't understand it but i really like the feel of this pin when i post it over the feel of this pin when i post it i just wish that they both felt like this whenever i post the pins because they feel it's, I have a much better writing experience when I post the Platinum 3776, but it's just, oh, I struggle a little bit with that one. This is my Platinum Profonte fountain pen. I can't remember if it's the Dark Seas or the other one, um, but it's a, it's a deep blue color and it's got a fine nib. This is a really great writing fountain pen. I love the nib on this thing. It's really consistent, really reliable, really smooth, but I just... I can only use bottle inks with this one because if I use a sample, most of the sample is going to be stuck right here in this section where the feed is. And that's a really frustrating experience. If you want to save some of the ink for another writing experience, you can never save enough of an ink sample after using it in this fountain pen because most of it gets stuck in here and you'd have to flush it out. So yeah, that's the only downside to that fountain pen, which is why I don't use it very often, but I can definitely use it with my bottled ink collection. So I'll do that this year. This is my Pilot Custom 74 in smoke, smoky gray. It's got a fine nib and it's got some feedback on this thing. Like the fine nib in here feels nothing like the fine nib in here. My Pilot Vanishing Point, this is the Pilot Vanishing Point in the matte black finish, and it's got a fine nib, but it feels so very different from my Pilot Custom 74 fine nib. This one has feedback. This one is so nice and so smooth, oh, but I love them both. I really do. This is my Pilot Custom 823 in amber. I purchased this one from a friend. Thank you, Kay. And it has a broad nib, so juicy, so wet, so lovely. This is my Pilot E or Pilot Maquillet fountain pen. It has a script nib, which I'm not exactly sure what that means, but it kind of feels like a fine nib. It's kind of like a stiff fine nib. Oh, and it's inked. I forgot about that. So this is one of those fountain pens that had a little bladder inside of this little bit right here. And I was so very disappointed, so very hurt that it was a bladder filled fountain pen where you, you do that that little movement and it would, that little piece inside, it would press down on the bladder. And then when you let it go, it would open up and suck in the ink. It would suck in the ink through the nib into the bladder. But I saw online that it was actually possible to use cartridges and converters with this fountain pen. And I finally figured out how to do it. So now I'm using a cartridge with this pen. So it's got a black pilot cartridge in here and I am so very excited to use this with I don't know just various inks and this is old faithful this is my pilot Kakano it's got a medium nib I received this one in an ink flight box and I've just been so very happy with this thing it writes so very well with whatever ink I use in here and yeah 
I'm happy with that. So I've already gone over my Want Your Dream pen and that is my full collection of fountain pens. Now this does not include my Jin Hao 82s. It does not include the Jin Hao, the Dao or 9019 fountain pen or any of the others, the uh, Wing Song fountain pens that I'm gonna be using for nib grinding because I'm gonna be butchering those possibly and maybe even giving away very many of those, like a whole bunch of those. These are the fountain pens that I use consistently in my daily writing experiences. Let me know what you think about these fountain pens. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. I thank you so much for watching and for joining me for this long, long overdue fountain pen collection video. And I hope you have a great day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.